Hi friends, welcome back to MelanieStamps.com. Today we're going to make this really sweet, it's really elegant I think, interlocking gatefold card. This is an A2 card, um, which means it's four and a fourth by five and a half. And we're going to go ahead and start by just cutting that card base so you can see the basics. So this is your normal cut or piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. And I'm going to cut it at five and a half. Super simple. Then I'm going to score this to create this gatefold. It's just a simple gatefold. It's just rather than scoring in the center, we're gonna score two scores into it. And those are both going to be at two and an eighth. And the Stampin' Trimmer has your darker cut blade, but it also has your score blade, which I love that it just stays on top and um, is right there whenever you need it. All right, we'll tuck that away. So here's our card base. Alrighty, and our layers for our card base, the cardstock I'm using is from the Forever Greenery, Green, Greenery Suite. This is a suite of products that has been very popular, I think. I mean, it's just beautiful foliage, and you know, it's got a light pattern on one side and foliage on the other. Um, they have this stamp set here, Forever Fern which is a distinctive stamp. If you've not heard of that before, imagine that you're coloring and you're wanting lights and darks, but you don't want to color. These distinctive stamps make your stamping look so different and so unique. When you actually stamp them, they have darker areas and lighter areas as if the light is already hitting the stamp. So with foliage, it's beautiful. And, you know, it's a great way to add accents. If you look back last Wednesday, I had two cards that were with a Wednesday sketch that I use these stamps in. But we're also, I'm also going to show you a little bit about this little splatter here later in a different card. So the stamp set that we're using for these pretty flowers is from To a Wild Rose. And we're going to go ahead and get out... Um, and use the Stamparatus this, this afternoon. So let's, I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And you know what, before I even do that, I'm gonna go ahead and dress the inside because it's one thing I tend to forget. So if I go ahead and do the inside now, I won't forget. So they will be ready for my friends at this new Bible study that I'm gonna be going to. I'm gonna make each of them a blessed card. And this this green, or green, this stamp here is from the Rooted in Nature um, stamp set. If you don't already have that, um, you could, you know, you could use any foliage, but the Rooted in Nature is a two stamp, two package stamp set. It's red rubber, it's, um, Got both sets, but all I've used here is the single one. But I mean, any stamp set that has like a foliage leaf or you see this one has even other ideas that you can use. But that's a lot of bang for your buck getting that. So I'm gonna go ahead, move this inked ink or inked stamp out of the way so I don't get everything green, which I admit it happens. <laughs> it happens. I think it happens to us all, just like it happens sometimes that the card is upside down when you put the front on it and you're like, oh shoot. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this in the center here. Just dresses up the card for the recipient and gives you, you know, a nice writing surface with the core, you know, the dark cardstock. I always like to put uh, either Whisper White or um, very vanilla cardstock in the center. So, okay, 
let's decorate the front. For this, um, I have cut two pieces of designer series paper, five and a fourth by one and seven eighths. But look, even the other side, look how pretty that is too. Oh. But this is piece. See? They're just different. One side's a little more calm than the other. One side has like a pattern and one side has like a foliage. So I like Tombow white glue because it's very forgiving. And if you're a perfectionist and you want it straight, this is the glue to use. Because you can move it around until you're happy. Well, as long as you're somewhat quick. It does, it does tend to dry, of course, but it gives you a little bit more time than the other glues, the seal and so, plus it's very affordable. So if you're wanting more ink and stamps and less, you know, spending less on glue, definitely get the Tombow. It's like the best $4 you'll spend. Okay, so both of those on. So that's the gatefold. Now we're gonna take, oh, thought I had lost a leaf piece. These pieces here are gonna be the fold, the flaps from the front. And um, your green, your dark cardstock will be two and a fourth by three, no, I'm sorry, two and three eighths by four inches. And then the paper, the designer paper that you use will be two and a fourth by three and seven eighths. Whoops. I was smart and got a new glue. So a lot of glue is coming out of it super fast, but I am known to eye squeeze those suckers till there is none in there. And I didn't think you'd want to sit around for that. So I grabbed a newer one, actually a brand new one. So, okay. Make sure you only apply glue to the side that you're adhering. Now this card design idea came from a fellow Stampin' Up! demonstrator and uh, Joanne Hewen is her name. And she did this a little bit differently measurement-wise. Um, I was after, move that up just a little bit. I was after a border of this background like that. See if I pull this other one in here. And I'm using different papers here. But this border is seen pretty evenly all the way down. And that's what I was after. So I think I changed the measurements just a little bit. And I could put the measurements in the district description below. Um, and it'll, they'll also be on my blog too at melaniestamps.com. But yeah, I'm wanting to see a little bit of it all the way. So, alrighty. Okay, okay. So, now we'll sit that aside for a second and we're going to get out the Stamparatus. A Stamparatus is Stampin' Up's version of a Misty on crack. And I'm serious when I say that. Okay, so a Stamparatus has two platforms instead of one. So it has two stamping surfaces, which we are going to utilize in this project. So the colors we're using are soft sea foam, Hair Pizzazz and Garden Green. The color inspiration from this is our Focal Friday today. So if you go to MelanieStamps.com, you will see the focal image um, for that, that inspired this color, these color ranges. Um, a girlfriend of mine just had a birthday and um, her son, actually, I'm going to do that twice. Maybe I'm going to be sneaky here. Let's see if I'll get away with it. Is my paper big enough? Well, my girlfriend got some flowers from her son. And um, they were gorgeous. They're, they're like an ivory. And there's greens. And 
it's just it's just awesome. They they are beautiful. Okay. And um I asked her, you know, when she showed me the picture, I asked her if I could have permission to use that for today's post, today's inspiration. And she was like, sure. So that's that image is on my blog today. It did not come as clear as I want, so I'm gonna put a little bit more on there. Now it'll be dark. But that's the beauty of the Stamparatus. Do two at once. And I actually did not plan to do these at the same time. But I can because it's all set up. There we go. Okay. We got the garden green, the glass color. So this is triple stamping. I mean, there's three layering, triple layering, I guess you could call it. And then, that actually looks really off. I don't know what I did there. See, that one came out perfect. What did I do with that one? Guess what? We'll just do it again. Okay. Just to baby wipe, just to make it a little less messy. Okay. Fair pizzazz. I'll wipe that off too, because it was a little splotchy. Let's just wipe that off for a second. Give it a second to breathe. check something. Somehow it didn't line up right, so I'm going to use this as a learning experience for you. Okay. You're like, <gasps> when you line these up, they're not going to be perfect. They're not supposed to be perfect. This is supposed to be kind of a watercolory look. But on that other one, it just didn't look right to me. It wasn't close enough. So since these are clear stamps, you just layer it where you want it. There we go. And then we'll get our dark garden green. And this should be a little better. Look at there. And like I said, it is not supposed to be perfect. It's actually made not to be. It's supposed to look like a watercolory look. Put those aside. And let's see. I'm gonna grab another piece of paper just to do um, the sentiment. Okay, we'll do that in garden green, the darkest. And let me show you, while well, since I'm doing this, I'm gonna show you another little surprise of the Stamparatus. This is called the hinge technique. Let's take a pair of pizzazz. This is about a one inch tall, and I have not tried this ahead of time. I'm doing this on the fly, because that's how we roll, right? 
But if you have a stamp that's about an inch in width, you can do what's called hinge step stamping. Oh, let me wipe that off real quick. Especially since this is the lightest color. Okay. You take it and you just go down one hinge. See, with Misty's and the other brands of platforms, I have a Misty. I have used my Misty like a crazy mad woman. Misty is a great tool. It just does not have the capabilities of removing the plates, flipping the plates, and doing techniques like this hinge step. So, so yeah, there's a lot of different things with the hinge step you can do. And I mean, wouldn't that be pretty, you know, framed with some of these green um, florals and flourishes? And, you know, I can use that in multiple different ways. I really like that. I'm making this these cards for... Um, a church ministry that's about to start, and um, I thought I thought it would be nice when we start our Bible study that I, you know, give a card to everybody. Um, I don't know the ladies personally really well, but I know with spending this time that we're going to have together doing this Bible study together that we will grow closer, and so I just thought it would be nice to to, um, you know, give them a little something when they come. I mean, when we get together. So for this, there is no die. I'm sorry, ladies. Um, and gents, if there's a gent out there, we do have some crafty gents. So, but fussy cutting is actually really relaxing if you think about it. Some people stress out over it, but when I used to do in-person classes before COVID and before mom's illness, um, I had a lot of ladies, she, they would like, will you fussy cut this or will you tie my bows? Tying the bows, I'm gonna be really close here because I've got that other one on the other side. Let's see if we can get this. Um, but yeah, tying bows is another thing that people would rather you do for them sometimes, but I don't mind, I, I actually enjoy it. And I leave a little, you know, white space around the edges and it is very forgiving, especially with a flowing watercolor look as this flower has. So I'm excited to put these projects in the, I haven't taken the photos for them yet and to see them up against the, the roses that my friend got for her birthday. I'm just excited to see them next to each other. It's a really, it was really fun to design. I would never have done green on green for anything. Green, the, green to me needs to be with purple. <laughs> I love, it's probably my favorite color combination is green and purple. Um, and, but I really, I, I just, I love it. It's just, it, look at that. Is that not perfect? Um, So yeah, I never would have picked these colors, but as soon as I saw her roses, um, I was like, wow, they're gorgeous. And I know exactly the paper um, that I was gonna use, this designer series paper. So currently, if you're seeing this video relatively close to when I publish it, Stampin' Up! does have a 15% off a whole bunch of their designer series papers. So you can find my link at melaniestamps.com if you're wanting to check that deal out. Also, when you buy a stamp and die bundle, like the Greenery Suite, you get 10% off as well. Uh, the best deal though, by far, is to actually sign up to be, I call them Love to Ink shoppers. Um, Love to Ink is my team name. And for people that want to, if you're wanting to get, you know, a handful of things, like if you're wanting this bundle and the paper and, and the ribbon I'm going to show you here in just a little bit, you know, your, your order is going to be, I don't know, like $80, $100, you know, by the time you add everything to it. And if you're excited and you want to get those, 
the very most affordable way to do it is to sign up for the $99. Um, there, you know, are no huge requirements and you get the discount. So you not only will get the discount of the bundle, which is 10%, but you also get $125 worth of product of your choice for $99 and you get free shipping. So it's win-win. Okay, so now the ribbon I was telling you about. This ribbon is a double-sided old olive and pretty peacock, like shimmer ribbon. I don't know if you can see that real well. There, the light hitting it. So one, one side is darker than the other. So we're going to take a little piece of this, and we're going to tie it around here. And I'm just going to do a knot. That's all I'm after. And I did this actually for balance purposes. Um, this card design, like I said, um, Joanne Hewen did it just a little different. Oh, I'm not gonna do a bow, I'm gonna do a knot. Um, she did it a little different. I don't think she had the ribbon. Um, she also did the different measurements, like I said. Um, and mine, I, I made it to where it actually stays closed. Just a little tip that I don't have here, but these um, types of ribbon tend to fray. And you can see it right here. You can see it coming apart and fraying. And if you take a lighter and you just real quickly, like that on the edges, which I'll do, that's why I'm leaving these a little bit longer. I'll do it off camera, but um, it seals it like, I don't know if you can tell, just, I mean, it just seals it. It melts just a little bit. And I'm talking about just brrr, done. Like, don't hold it to where it catches on fire. But it seals the edges and then they won't fray. So, for our flowers. Actually, let me fussy cut the blessed first. Because that's how I gauged where I put my flowers. Um... Each Wednesday on my blog, currently, I'm doing a Wednesday sketch, is what I'm calling it. Um, there will be a card sketch that I use to follow to make the samples of the day. Um, I also encourage people to also use it as a uh, inspiration. I mean, in the middle of the week, we want to be crafty, but we don't have a lot of time and energy. But, you know, if you want to just get in the craft room for just a little while, and it doesn't matter what products you use, um, you know, use what you have and get crafty. And, you know, the sketch really helps when you're, um, you know, you're short on time or your mojo's gone, you know, it, it really tends to help. And sometimes the cards I make are just like, I never would have done that. But the sketch, you know, the sketch made it happen. And then on Fridays, which is this post, um, I'll have a focal image here again for inspiration going into the weekend. And, um, you know, my, my friend's flowers are, like I said, are this image for this week. So, and they are just beautiful. I don't know if I said this when I was fussy cutting a little while ago, um, but when you're fussy cutting, especially really detailed like this, um, move your paper, and it's actually getting a little difficult because there's not a whole lot of paper left, but move your paper instead of your scissors, and it allows you to um, get a more even, you know, change in direction. You don't see a lot of, you know, points, and it's, of course, right when I say that, I get one, but I can cut it off. But yeah, it's just smoother and simpler. And let's see if I can do it without cutting the tail off. <laughs> okay, let me look at that. Is there anything? No, oh, I think it's just fine. Yep, good to go. So let's use some of our liquid glue again. And I'm just going to put a little bit on. 
be careful because there's a lot in there. I just did that because there was quite a bit of glue on there and I didn't want it seeping everywhere. Though Tombow does dry um, clear. But, okay, so there's my sentiment. Go ahead and wipe that glue off. It's funny when my husband got home last night, he looked at me and he was like, what's that on your peeling off your hand? And I, and I had forgotten that, yep, I still had glue on my hand. Putting these dimensionals in the center so they don't get in the way of the fold. And when I put my sentiment there, well, I put the first one up here, and originally I thought they were going to be one there, one there. But then I decided I wanted to use the blessed sentiment because of my ladies group that's about to start. So for this one, I decided to go up higher. And happy accident, it wasn't done on purpose, but I, it, it caused me to do this, which then created an actual locking mechanism you know, that calls it interlocking gatefold, but the interlocking in my mind when I saw this design was this configuration, this is interlocking. But when I put this up a little higher, it actually holds it, it holds the interlock. So when you lay it down or you're or shipping it, it's still flat. So I really like the way that turned out. And then inside, it's dressed and ready to write. So, I am going to show you, oh, no, no, let's, let's do the rhinestones. We can't forget our bling. Let's see. Let's put three little rhinestones in the center of each. More green. Never would have happened. But thankfully, because of the Focal Friday. If there's ever a focal image that you'd like me to create around, feel free to let me have it. Send it my way. So see, right now I have three of those beauties. Then the other design I did last night, going along with the same, um, it's a different design card, but the same color scheme. Um, and I used, I actually did not use any designer paper. Um, for this, I did faux designer paper. And that is just taking some of the um, cardstock and I used three, you know, I took my cardstock and I used these three stamps. Um, the little rose in, and the sentiment that I used is from Beautiful Friendship. The leaf was the one I showed you earlier, the rooted in nature. And then, oh, the splatter was, um, which one was it from? It was here a second ago. I don't see it. I'm not sure where the splatter went. Okay, so anyways, so I just, I stamped the roses first and then I filled in the leaves and then just used the little splatter everywhere. And that's gonna drive me crazy not knowing where it went. Aha. I found it. It's right here in the Forever Fern. That's a stamp set, the distinctive one I told you about. It's that little image right there and it looks like nothing, but then when you put it in here, it looks like it was printed. So then all this die cutting was done using, um, for the label here, I used these ornate frame dies. And I used this little one here and this one. And I put that on a stitched circle. And then for the edges, I used two here. And this has one, two, three, four, five, six different borders. But I used two from this ornate border die set to get the edges here. Oops, and I think it turned out really nice. I added the little rhinestones to it too, and I dressed it up. So those are ready to go as well. So I really appreciate you guys stopping by today. 
and um, I will try to do a video every every other week, twice twice a month is my goal. And um, if there's any techniques or fo fancy folds or anything that you're interested in learning more about, um, coloring or any design elements that you're interested in, just send me an email. But Melanie Stamps at Yahoo.net. And I will see you next time. Thank you.